this is some real collaboration right now. I'm using the Google person's dongle. So um, yeah, <laughs> open source. That's what we'll be talking about today. Anyway, hi, everyone. My name is Manav Dalal, and I'll be talking about streamlining model export with the new Onyx exporter. Let's jump into it. So if you haven't heard about Onyx already, it is an open format built to represent machine learning models. It defines a common set of operators fundamental to machine learning and deep learning models. And it also provides a common file format so you can save that and use it with a variety of tools. If you don't know already, the two main benefits of this are interoperability, so you can develop in your favorite framework. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say for a lot of you, it's probably PyTorch because we might be here. So yeah, your favorite framework. And not worry too much about the inferencing logistics associated with that. The other great thing is that it really unlocks a lot of hardware optimizations because of the hardware access that you allow. Uh, that means regardless of whether you're working on web, NPU, GPU, CPU, you name it, uh, you'll get a lot of optimizations that you can easily access for your models. Onyx is great. Here's a lot of people who use them. Uh, these are some of the people who export Onyx models. And although the lo those logos are pretty small, hopefully you're recognizing some of yourselves and maybe some competitors or partners. Uh, as well as a lot of people use these to deploy um, you know, their models when it comes to actually running them. And again, you're hopefully recognizing some of yourselves, your competitors, or your friends. So how we did it before. A uh, quick recap, basically since PyTorch 1.2, we've exported to Onyx using the torch.onyx.export API. And again, I'm assuming that because you're at this talk, maybe that might be you. Uh, there's a lot of issues with this old API. So Torch script tracing through the Torch JIT trace API is leveraged as the model executes to produce a static graph. And while that worked, uh, there's a lot of limitations with those static graphs. First, you have control flow. So for your if statements and loops, uh, that stuff doesn't do a great job uh, when it comes to Torch script tracing. It doesn't handle the nuances between training and eval either. And it also doesn't really handle truly dynamic inputs. So that is a problem. Now we have solutions to some extent. Uh, Torch JIT script attempts to solve some of those things. So for example, control flow is something that is covered. However, TorScript itself is a subset of Python. And so while there is one-to-one -one mapping, there's not mapping for everything. And as a result, stuff like in-place operations are sometimes left aside. This isn't great. But we're at the PyTorch conference, so we're going to talk about this thing that we've probably heard about all day at talks, Torch Dynamo. Uh, I'm not going to you know, summarize the entire thing. You can read that quote if you're so inclined. But in short, in 2.0, it was announced as a JIT compiler designed to speed up unmodified PyTorch programs. And that results in usability and performance gains. Uh, it does that by rewriting Python bytecode, gets uh, pieces of PyTorch operations in an FX graph. And then we can use that and get all those great performance improvements that we want. Awesome. It's also the engine that's the foundation for Torch Compile, Torch Export, and of course, what I'm going to be talking about today, the new Onyx exporter. So let's jump into it. In 2.1, we announced a new exporter that's currently in beta. Maybe some of you have used it. Maybe some of you haven't. I'm here today to hopefully convince you to at least give it a shot. Uh, it looks kind of similar to the old API. It's a little bit more complex, though. You can uh, have your Torch Dynamo module, which you input, as well as the args related to that module for exporting purposes. Oh, that's louder. <laughs> And there's also a new uh, uh, query, which is export options, as well as you can add quargs a little bit more directly. So that's a little bit simpler to do. Uh, so by leveraging Dynamo to capture this graph, it's a lot easier to produce an Onyx equivalent to that graph. And the dynamic nature of these models can be preserved. Whereas previously, we had static graphs. We can now have dynamic graphs, which we can use for a slew of benefits. So Onyx functions are also used to encapsulate these operators and NN modules, which means, again, we get more information. And we can use that later for performance improvements and just general improvements, as well as better legibility for these models. Uh, it removes a lot of complications, and it makes it a lot simpler. But you, know, you can hear that from me, and that means one thing. Let me just show you a quick example. So hopefully this, yeah, OK, good. it's showing up pretty well. But you can kind of see the different graphs over here. So on the left, we have that old static graph, which is fine and works when you're uh, exporting models, and again, is somewhat optimized as well. But on, in the middle, you can kind of see what that Torch Dynamo graph looks like now. There's a lot more information, and all of your operators are, comp are captured in functions. This is really useful because they actually, uh, one, once you see in line, like you can see there's so much more information that's captured. Uh, you get a lot of data types that are supported. It's all the data types that are supported by the ops instead of just that one that you exported the model with. This is, again, really useful for optimiz optimizing later. Uh, and you just get a lot more information, which is, again, useful later. So let's talk about the highlights of this new API that we've worked on and we hope that you use. So as I mentioned earlier, we have that optional, that optional export options. And there's a lot of things that you can do with that. So first of all, there's the Onyx registry, which allows you to configure A10 decomposition. You can prescribe A10 IR to Onyx operator, and you can do that mapping. And then it also provides three APIs for three, or like it, it provides APIs for a scenario that's pretty straightforward. 
which is handling unsupported ATEN ops, custom ops with existing ORT support, and custom ops without Onyx runtime support. So in the first two cases, you're able to provide those operators. You can write them yourself in Onyx script, which I'll touch on in a second. Uh, it's a little bit of a language, but you can basically write those languages or, or those operators and specify uh, how you want them to be written out if they're not available. And in the third case, not only can you write the operators that are custom, but also you can write the ORT kernels that are required to register uh, those ops. We also have fake context, so that's thanks to Meta's fake tensor. Uh, we can export a model without loading all of the weights and then running the model later on hardware is possible. So what that allows is, you know, compute's pretty expensive these days and it's hard to always get enough compute to do what we need to with these models. But with the fake context, what we're able to do is export that on a really simple machine and without actually running the model. And what that means is that we don't have to wait so long on getting these models that are exported and ready to run. And instead we can do it on prem or you know, however we decide we wanna export those models. And then when it's time to actually run the models, uh, we can do that on the device that we require, but we already have the Onyx model ready to work with without having to spend potentially many minutes to export that model. We know we ran into issues previously with the TorScript exporter um, when it came to these big models, especially, you know, everyone's talking about Llama these days. It's a big model, and yeah, we run into memory issues. But with fake context, you don't have to run into those issues. And another thing that we noticed with our old TorScript exporter was that debuggability and self-serviceability weren't great. So that's something that we, me as the PM of the team, <laughs> uh, made sure that I, I was really emphasizing when it came to making sure that this was really easy to use. So there's a lot of diagnostic and self-serviceability options so that when you run into errors, because you might write now it's in beta, it'll be really easy to figure out what to do or how to solve these errors. That's something that we really care about and something that we built into it. Now, after you've run this, this on a model of your choice, you get the export output object. And this is an object that's in memory, and you can kind of reason about it and kind of mess with it with the model proto property, which you'll get on that object. So you can look at it and eventually there'll be great options to make changes and performance updates to that. Also, obviously, you can just save it to disk as you would with any other Onyx model and that's a really straightforward process as well. So in short, it's great. <laughs> Onyx script is what I was talking about earlier when it came to implementing new ops. So this was announced as an open repo uh, probably a couple months ago. You may have read a blog about it. You may not have. Uh, in short, it's an idiomatic, simple way to author functions. Uh, in my experience, when you're working with Onyx previously, it was a really challenging thing to do. I know, like having written my own ops, it's it's a pain. Now it's really straightforward. Uh, here's a clamp max operator, which hopefully you can read. Uh, if you can, you can see the code is somewhat straightforward, and that is as a result of Onyx script making that really easy to do. It's also the basis of the registry of the new exporter. So all the ops that we wrote in Dynamo were through Onyx script, and so we're really investing in this technology because it's really straightforward and really easy to do, as well as very legible for people slightly less technical, and so it's really easy to go about. You can also directly author Onyx models entirely using Onyx script if you so choose. Um, that's up to you, but it's an option. Looking in the future. So we're obviously, just like about everyone else has mentioned, of course, uh, over the course of uh, the talks today, we're going to be integrating directly with Torchshot Export, and that's really important to us. Another thing that I mentioned, um, we also want to work for ahead of time stuff, so Onyx to Onyx transformation and optimization tooling will be coming soon to help leverage these models. Uh, yeah, we expect this to be hopefully used by a lot of runtimes. So before I get into questions, I'm just going to leave this slide here so that you guys can look. There's a lot of links. You can use the aka.ms links or download the presentation later to kind of get started. If you're really eager, you can just jump in with pip install, torch, onyx scripts, and onyx runtime and get off to the races. Thank you so much, and I would love any questions if you have any. Sure. Right, right now, just, just for him. We're working on it. It's a lot, of, yeah. So between the new exporter and the Onyx script work, mm -hmm. are you expecting to read hundred percent exporter success from Torch to Onyx? Yeah. So where we are right now, uh, anything that exports with Dynamo, for the most part, will also export with the Dynamo exporter. So anything that the Dynamo exporter is able to, or like Torch Dynamo is able to trace, we do get successful uh, export on. 
there are some graph breaks and there are a couple niche ops that aren't totally implemented, but we're very close to the way there and we're tracking this weekly as we make iterations on the exporter. So we're getting better and better performance week over week. I, if you're interested, come see me later about graphs. We have this all plotted, so we're, we know that we're in that direction. Any other questions, comments? All right, thank you all so much for listening. Really appreciate it. You can come to me for stickers if you'd like. <laughs>